good evening. We are back with Crohn's Crucible. We were off last week for Mother's Day because some mothers who are not like me would rather not have the family sticking on a computer while they were wanting to have dinner and things. So we took kindly to them and allowed them to, to have the evening to themselves. What has the week been like for you since we've been gone? We've got some strange happenings tonight, so we'll let you guys catch up. I've been looking for a job, looking for a job. <laughs> I have finally gone back to work, so that's good at least. My yearly round of baby birds have come around in my uh, air conditioner. So if you hear chirping behind him, it is not sound effects from our game. It is in the background. He can't help it. He can't get rid of it. He wishes he could, but it's stuck there. <laughs> and, it's fine. And, the part of, and the part of Relian's birds will be played by. <laughs> <laughs> the part of yep, let, me, birds. let me get my microphone for whenever you need to talk to them. <laughs> right. Yep. But uh, yeah, no, they, they should be quiet tonight. Uh, it's not good weather out right now and so they're kind of muffled by their mother right now i have actually been moving i've actually been uh planning to move into a new apartment because this place has gotten a little too expensive and just enjoying the feeling of being in a mediocre yet essential business so i can't be laid off so yay, <laughs> yay essential well, business. and let me just say well here we are again it's always such a pleasure and we've got fun things tonight. In the interim, while we were gone, they could not resist me. They couldn't do without me. Um, so right. we wound up with uh, RP behind the scenes. Basically, when we left off, what had gone on was this shapeshifter or dark form or whatever the thing was had come into the Troll Skull Alley in the middle of while they were trying to figure out what to do with the Stone of Golar. And the stone was talking to some people, things were going on. Relian wound up with it and slammed it inside of a chest to try and keep it from playing any more tricks, which marginally helped, but hasn't completely. And then this black thing comes out of what was supposedly Yorn, the Relian's cousin, not cousin, who was at the inn, and a fight erupted, and a lot of things happened at once, and everybody was confused, and especially Varys, who didn't know what the heck was going on because he wasn't yet hearing voices in his head. So he wasn't sure what had happened when everybody started grabbing for each other's throats and fighting over this thing. He was pretty confused. So Epiphany had run off. He got caught by Relian. They were trying to get the stone away from each other. Eventually, Relian managed to get the stone to stop mine warping everybody and get it to settle down so that they could have a talk. And as Relian and Epiphany are like running together now rather than trying to kill each other, they are trotting along and there's some communications going on with the stone. While meanwhile, back at the inn, three of them, Cash and Shepherd and Nakri, are trying to do away with this thing that's in the inn that has now turned into a cobalt and is chasing after Varus, who is chasing after Relian and Epiphany. And so there's just this big mass of chaos in the street going on. And the stone is having this conversation, which we decided to have on text while we were gone. And it was a very interesting text, and we decided that it was so much of a reveal that we just could not leave it off of the stream. So we have decided that we will do this Basically, it's a reading of what we texted. We're going to do the best we can to not make it sound too canned. But this is basically what we texted to each other in the interim. And this went on for a day or two as we got all these pieces of information. 
up. Uh, it will not take that long to read, however. N no, not at all. And for some reason, that's going to be a problem. Why is it doing that? For some reason, my list of the things wanted to jump it down into the middle every time I pushed my push the talk, so that would have been a problem. Um, just in case it causes more problems, I'm going to put myself on voice activated during this. While, so to set the stage for where we were on this, the trio of three were running ahead and the other three were back at the end and yes. they decided yep. to duck into an Excuse alley to get out of view because Relian was attempting to place a spell on this thing and he tucks it into this chest to try and get it under control. The thing, however, is still having some effect and as we get to one point in this, the uh, thing is able to speak to Varus for the first time. Varus is very startled, of course, to hear this thing in his head. But they duck into this alley as it begins to have a conversation with them to explain what it is it needs in a more rational sense. And there's some very odd mental images that come out from this as they are doing this. So we pick up the scene with Relian holding the chest, Epiphany trying to have a conversation with the thing as it is communicating, and Varus just entering the alley behind them. And this is where we are going. Meanwhile, there's a shadowy thing behind them in the alley, and things are going on there as well. So it is a rather startling thing. Can you hear me now? That might yes. Be. Okay. So uh, as the tri <laughs> as the trio, I, I tried to put it into into my word processor, but that it crapped out on me. So we're gonna have to just read straight from the straight straight from the Discord. Uh, as the trio run with the stone in Relian's protection, Epiphany glances glances back to Varus, uh, their eyes shifting unnaturally. The stone that we recovered is a thinking thing, speaks to our mind, whispers. We must take it someplace to to the keep hall of justice. Then it will be gone, free, and we need not need worry on it. Eh, that's funny. It told me it needed to get to the old mage tower. It needs to get into the hands of a uh, black viper or some such to stop up the hells from rising up or something. I, I don't know. I was I was half paying attention. Did, he looks at uh, the small chest under his arms and shakes it a little bit and says, just, just what game are you playing at? All right, so this next part would actually be heard by Varus in his head for the first time. Relian would feel the mental image focus back on him. A game it is not. Kill will they to get at what this one guards. But three are the keys, and their locations are not known as they have been hidden before the dark valet struck, it seemed the ways of fate aimed us at the courts, as the valet takes many forms, and his form was seeking answers there. But he came to us. It is too late now for that path. It leads to the old tower and the viper. Lie there, the answers must. To you was this one drawn before, but dark hands prevented, and an explosion ended the journey. A long journey it has taken. One thing only do we lack, and your control in prison has prevented us. So Epiphany and Relian would see Varys uh, quite a bit startled <coughs> at the fact that he was hearing voices inside his head. He, Varys is a fairly simple man. He doesn't deal with all this arcane nonsense. Welcome to my world. So you're telling me that smoking earlier was caused by this thing? And that now it's taking you, telling you to take it somewhere, but now you're taking it there voluntarily? What's all this about demons in the courts? Is it involved with the Castlanter cult? We do not think so. We think it is an objective of the cults and demons and devils and such, but... 
Friend Relian, we never did ask it what it wants. Stone, what is your objective? Commanded to reveal is this one, and fated is your path. One of the comrades must willingly allow Union to see. Only then can the direction of the answers be revealed. Below lies the vault. Guarded is it. Stolen for a time was the gatekeeper. Now the gatekeeper journeys homeward. Four were those with greed, and two only remain on the path. Most dangerous now is the last. From thence did the dark valet crawl forth again. Watching you he has been since first you set your foot upon the path. Okay, so what is this dark valet exactly? And what is this vault being guarded? I don't even think we know the right questions to be asking it currently. The dark valet is the servant of a dark lord under a darker lord yet. Many forms does he take. Guard, judge, servant, noble, and many times have you seen him. But fated is the Troll Skull Inn, and upon your residence the path was opened again. Old hands seek peace, young hands seek understanding. Odd hands seek lineage, guided hands seek wealth. Wronged hands seek restitution, noble hands seek guidance, and completion does this one seek. Deep, deep lies the vault spoken of in myth, and powerful is its guard. I've got several questions. Well, actually, I have several thousand questions in general, but only a few several for you specifically, Orby. Uh, can I call you Orby? Thanks, Orby. Uh, you, um, so you said you lacked one thing. I'm guessing from your comment earlier, you meant a house or a willing body to take you hither and yonder. You also say that upon our residence of the Troll Skull, our fates became intermingled with all this nonsense. Here he looks at Epi and says, Your suggestion to eat Volo is getting more tempting by the minute. He turns back to we the chest. We knew that it was a perfect idea, thank you. And uh, as he turns back to the chest, he says, And what do you mean, union, for full answers? What sort of union? The permanent kind? The, the matrimonial kind? I'm not ready for marriage! I don't think it means the permanent kind, though... I do... Anyway, I know that certain magical items are able to be bonded to a person's soul, so there is a limit on how many items can be bonded at a time. If it is needed, I'd be willing to bond with this item, albeit temporarily, to find out what we would know, though I would prefer not to. There is a long, thoughtful pause from the stone and a sense of it trying to keep calm, like... Explain it to simple minds, a kind of elder patience with those who refuse to understand. Union, yes, one we must become, but any of the comrades can it be. Still, your minds are the most open to the binding. The one called the shepherd carries too many burdens. The one called Cashin carries a great anger. The one called Nakri carries a kingdom on her shoulders. The three of you have open minds, and with one of you can the path be shown. With the others, this one fears the path would be rejected under a thousand reasons not to believe. With the twisted-limbed one of devious intent did it seem the bond was intended, but fate and the strength of the comrades intervened, and delayed we were until the dark valet found us. Friend. Really, we would volunteer. Relian seems to be deep in thought, and finally he says, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not really sure which pose I should be leaning towards. I'm not sure what poses have to do with it. I kind of like this one, but if, if, it's, if it's what you want, Epi, but... Is that why he wants to get to the mage tower? To bond with someone? And are you sure? You, you know, Orby can alter minds. What if it tries to ch change you? He, he actually seems to be quite uneasy about the prospect. Epiphany 
tilts their head as they sort of slow down to have this conversation. And uh, the, the goat eye and the lizard eye sort of blink independently of each other. Our mind is multifaceted and the most used to having access to the thoughts of others and being accessed by others. If any of our minds would be able to resist it, if any control it would likely be. The mental connection falls silent. The stone is waiting, but there is an underlying sense of urgency, a fleeting glimpse of that melted thing crawling behind them in the dark back there. Friend Relian, when we have joined with the stone, we will know where to go and what to do. How do we conjoin with you, Stone of Gold? Simple. Hold, touch, open, and accept. But then, quietly, there is another thought. Three of you is not enough. Difficult will the path be. Wherever the keys lie, they will have been hidden within the most dangerous of places. And you can feel the stone puzzling over where they would be. So, do we need all... And to the stone, he's saying, do we need all three of these keys to access his vaults? And does it have to be done tonight? I still have various wounds on my body from both from uh, Epiphany and from others. Um, does it need to be done tonight? It might be prudent to at least take a little bit of a breather before we go off gallivanting into the into the darkness. Perhaps, friend Rillian, it would be prudent for you and I to secure a location to hide while closed mind aids the others against Cousin Jorn and then comes to us with them. <laughs> During this time, we can conjoin with the stone. It would a be sudden, efficient. a sudden change ap appears over Relian. Uh, like he stands up straighter. He there's a definite shift in the air, and he suddenly just turns into a nearby alleyway after making sure the coast is clear. Yeah, yes, yes, that might be best. But let me make one thing clear, very clear. He looks to the chest. Both of his eyes are now a blazing red, and they stay that way for several seconds. If you harm my little brother, or attempt to tamper or manipulate his mind further than the implied agreement of temporary union, I will hurt you. I will find a way to hurt you, I will bind whatever passes for your spirit, shatter you into a million pieces, and hide them so that you are never assembled again. You will suffer an eternity of not death, but a limbo of feeling incomplete. And Epiphany, please, if anything happens, please, please don't hate me for doing what I have to in order to get you back to normal. His eyes actually shift that to various soft colors like pink, violet, and aqua. There's a moment of pause as, as they sort of go into this alley and stop and Epiphany shifts and looks at Relian and reaches out with a clawed hand. We are incapable of hating you, friend Relian. We, we have attempted it on numerous occasions, but the parameters were incompatible to produce the assumed result. We will trust your decisions. And I will be right back. I'm getting called by a child. As, uh, cool as children epiphany, almost cold as epiphany to seems to be going into this at the same to the time where it's return to relian to and say and a reaction are you able to, to take threat. care of this uh, take care of him threats of i want to get back to the others and make sure they're not hurt by whatever this, this dark valet thing that's been following us threats of incompletion are taken very seriously this one already non-exists because it has not completed its purpose your Little brother? 
there's the slightest feeling of question or confusion at that. Your little brother should be relatively unchanged, although this is the only time the union has ever been accomplished, so it cannot be said for certain. There will be, perhaps, some alteration when two minds think as one. The stone pauses and mentally examines Epiphany up and down. Well, when another mind is added to the mix that already exists there, another is likely just part of the crowd. Another pause and a sense of startlement. It turns its mind entirely to Epiphany, and there is a clear sound of wonderment. Your mind gives proof to the concept that there is poetic justice in this world. So fitting that the house which caused this should be the solution to its ending. Perhaps he, perhaps you knew what you were doing, Savio. The stone studies Epiphany's mind for nearly a minute before turning again to the matter at hand and speaks again to all three. Many years ago was the feud. Close was the dark line to gaining the wealth needed to end the agreement. Thus did my creator steal and hide away the wealth of Waterdeep to keep it safe. But lost it has been for more than a decade. Now it must return, and the aims of the dark line must be thwarted. To end them is an impossibility, but their strength must be reduced. Behind them lies power of an unimaginable death. Hideous and horrible it is. We must stop it. Relian seems to be taking all of this in. He's not sure if Varys is listening or if it's all going over his head. He doesn't really care at this point, but he just motions for Varys to go back to the tavern to see if everything is all right. And he says, yes, that might be a prudent course of action do be careful and as Varys is leaving he can actually hear relian almost whisper to himself he's slipping in and out of both of his accents happy be careful please if anything happened to you i'd be sadder than a goblin with a gusted gallbladder Varys gets a chill as he starts running back to the troll school to assist the rest of his companions. Turns out Epiphany was the sane one. <laughs> the mutated creature looks at Relian, then the stone. Uh, we would not judge you for defending your existence or operating with revenge, but Thank you, brother. And with their fingers, uh, of twisted like e the the hand that has like two of them are tentacles, two of them are claws, and one of them looks like a you know just kind of like a knobby finger reaches out to take the orb, and then begins like focusing their mind onto it. There is a soft, tentative warmth that begins to test your mind. It feels like a child opening a multitude of doors in a new house just to see what's behind them and being surprised by the simplest thing. Finally, as it opens one dusty door, it whispers, Ah, there you are, Savio. I should have realized you'd be hiding there. Why, Savio? Did you intend to be the force to stand against the dark, or do you find yourself here by accident? In the end, it will not matter, but even I find it ironic. And sort of in Epiphany's mind space, there's the clack of uh, heels as a dark elven woman in a green gold dress strolls in and walks to the desk in the middle of this circular chamber where Savio is sitting and she kind of pokes the catatonic man and then looks to the new figure Ah, oh, hello. Who are you? Are you the new voice? And then about a dozen or so other people from nowhere join the, uh, the elven woman's chorus. We love having new voices to talk to. 
the stone or golor studies the woman with curiosity. So many players, one part. If they'd given this one a sense of humor, it would laugh. And all for one stone they didn't even know was in the play. Does one of you speak for this uh, creature? And then the woman smiles. Bright. We prefer to be called Epiphany, not creature. What do you prefer to be called, Golor? As for who speaks for Epiphany, we all do, dear. Dear beloved Savio has been here the longest, but rarely speaks, and she kneels down to wrap her arms around the older man at the desk who doesn't react. A pseudo-mental image of a wizened elderly man shimmers into mental view. Epiphany. Appropriate. The awakened, in a sense, and... Yes, Golor will serve. The old man closes his tired eyes with a sad expression. I've waited so long. I'm tired. I will be glad to unburden myself of the knowledge. So many myths all wrong. Do you have any questions before we begin? Mm. The old woman says... No, this feels correct, and she rises and smooths her skirt and dusts her hands off before holding a hand out to uh, Golar. We have not come this far to hesitate at the final moment. Golar holds out his own gnarled hand, twisted like old mahogany. Then let us begin. Any questions that remain will be made clear at some point anyway. Epiphany would for, perhaps feel a bit dizzy as the new mind settled in. Golor wiped his hand over the desk in the scene. Dusty in here, I'll do a bit of cleaning when we head out. He evicts Savio from the chair. Images begin to flash in Epiphany's mind as he settles into it. A tower, a dark slinking creature, a woman in a dark purple cape, even images of Silvery Moon. Then another sequence begins, an elderly noble in rich robes, a dark slinking creature. The man motions frantically to water Davian guards who drag a series of small heavy carts, a stone gate deep underground. Now the man runs. The creature fells guards as they run down the street and chokes them, demanding to know where the carts were taken. But to a man, the guards refuse. The misshapen thing stoops to look at one of them. You did your part, Stagic. Too bad you believed your own worth too much. You didn't really think removing the investigator would be all that we needed, did you? The form shimmers, and Stagic stands over his own body. The thing holds out a hand and absorbs the corpse. He looks at the distant retreating form of Never Ember and growls. I will find it. It belongs to Asmodeus. You have not heard the last of us. With that, Epiphany's mind was clear as the new resident kicked his feet up on the desk. An elven woman comes and puts a hand on her on Golor's shoulder and says, Be welcome. Meanwhile, in meat space, uh... Meat space and meat space. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Reality. Meat space uh, from the perspective of everybody around, Epiphany touched the orb a moment, held it, and then just <laughs> just drops to the ground, still clutching the orb. And there's a brief moment where he's just where they're just gone, and then their eyes flicker open. <laughs> Friend, really. <laughs> Are you there? Uh, Rillian would uh, support Epiphany. Like he'd, he'd keep his distance from the stone to not interfere with the attunement process, but he'd like heft uh, Epiphany up so like he's leaning, so like he's sitting against a wall instead of just slouched on the ground. And says, "I'm I'm here. Do not worry. All is well." We will need brutal smasher, vein leaper, calm corpse, and closed mind. And the goat eye like shifted around to where Varus was and blinks. We we must hurry. 
They have much to learn. All is in process. Soon, everything will be well. Meanwhile, back at the tavern. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. Wait, what the heck would that make us? The Legion of Doom? Yeah. Do you have any doubts at this point? No. They're more the Wonder Twins. <laughs> so basically what we had at this point was Farrah started running back at full tilt for the inn, but the shapeshifter who had uh, transformed into a kobold has come running out of the inn with three people on its tail. He goes charging past the kobold, yeah. of course not realizing what it is, pulls up short as he almost runs into the other three, turns, realizes what the kobold is. Uh, Vera sees that the figure is running a little bit faster than the rest of his companions. And he says, Epi and Valian are waiting for you at a nearby alley. Just go down the main street and you'll see them. I can give chase of this. I'm faster. And he takes off in quick pursuit. Cashin has been frantically giving chase all this time, firing, firing bolt after bolt at the figure. However, none of them hit, and that thing is just getting farther and farther from him as he's starting to gasp for air. <sighs> And he just looks at uh, Varys and, and just nods at his words. He's breathing too heavily to give a quick response. Nakri at this point would probably maneuver past Cash and probably go, this is why you should probably stop your drinking, dear, and keep chasing the uh, kobold. She is just on the hunt with that one. <laughs> The shape-shifting kobold was running at the limit of its dashes, but after just a half minute or so, it was clear Varus was gaining, even if slowly. The small creature began to stoop low to the ground and began to melt again. It was only half done with its melt when it suddenly pulled up, hissing a distinctly non-kobold sound. There was a snuffling sound, a tip of the head, and its eyes suddenly glowed red as it peered down an alley. Whatever it smelled or didn't smell, it angered the creature. As its melt completed, black fangs protruded from the amorphous shape, and a dark fog swirled around its form. What little shape there was. The being turned into tendrils of soot and fog and turned sharply away from the alley, hastily flowing over the ground westward. In the growing darkness, he was nearly invisible, save for those glowing eyes. Even those with good eyesight of the elven blooded, would, it too, soon vanished around a corner headed southwest. Varys pants a little bit as he realizes that he's lost the th the thing. What was that? He turns back to the alley that the form is peering down and realizes that it's the same alley that Epiphany and Relian were in, but on the other side. Uh, he starts walking down the alley at approximately the same time that the other three show up at the other end of the alley. <sighs> Take it, it's gone then. It turned into smoke. Grace, just as we, just as we actually need something of the mystical nature to get involved with all this crap. What was that? Uh, the shepherd wasn't far behind from Varus. Uh, I don't know what. Uh, I don't know what your cousin was prior to the shelter, or taking shelter with us, but considering what has transpired, I would say it's safe to assume that your cousin is dead, and that something tried to impersonate them. Uh, Relian is uh, remaining quiet and motionless for the most part. He has his hands clasped behind his back, and he's staring down at the still form of Epiphany, who's only twitching every so often during the attunement process. Uh, 
A slight shift of his hood, however, reveals his ever-shifting eyes, glowing all the brighter in the darkness of the alley, now looking at the approaching group, and he just states calmly, The time for subterfuge is long since past. No cousin be that of mine, nor ever was. Nay, instead, a fleeing ally that sought sanctuary and concealment. We provided such, but if in... Indeed, as you say, then safe to assume that they indeed have met a grim fate. My apologies to you, Mistress Nokri, for the deception, but it was necessary. It all is rather unfortunate. Regardless, however, Epiphany is, as ever, my primary concern. As such, to concern your question, young Varus, things progress well, as far as I can tell, and yet my bones quiver in dread anticipation. Like the calm before a deadly storm. Master Shepherd, you too are knowledgeable in the arcane arts. I would beg your assistance in the monitoring of my darling little brother until such a time as his attunement is complete. I am feeling ill until we are sure he is still himself. And uh, once more his gaze returns fully down onto uh, the form of Epi. And all of you still might be weirded out by him speaking fluently, comprehensively, politely, even poetically, and him calling all of you, and each of, and even calling you all by your proper names instead of his favorite nicknames for all of you. Varys is indeed surprised, shown by his eyebrows raising a bit. Uh, while he is doing so, perhaps we should discuss our next couple of steps. Uh, what are we doing after this union ends? I know that most of us are still exhausted on our abilities, and while a quick rest during Epiphany's attunement may allow me to recover from my injuries, neither my magic nor any of yours will return during such time. I would advise that we try to avoid a fight if possible, especially since we're going to this, what was it? A mage tower with a black snake? Cashin finally walks up to the group after having a lag behind to catch his breath. What's this? About a snake and, uh, oh, uh, my condolences, Raelian. Uh, I th I'm guessing you already heard the news. Uh, the Canson that is Raelian simply hums in response to the rogue statement. Hmm. I have no desire to repeat myself about my cousin, so you may get the recently revealed details from our young friend Varys. Speaking of which, in turn, Varys, we are en route to the what is col collectively known as the Old Mage Tower, a location of some historic value to the city, and the location where the Black Viper may be found. Epiphany's attunement will allow us more information as well as a possible route there before now unknown to us. Cashin, my dear fellow, if you would be so kind, guard the entrance to the alley, discreetly. Only members of our merry little band should be here right now. Cashin, Cashin nods, but as he does, he just rubs his head. It looks like he's having a lot of uh, very big migraine, but he takes to his orders and just starts looking outward towards the city streets behind some crate and barrels. Varus goes to the end of the alley with Cashin and casually leans against a wall nearby, trying to look inconspicuous, uh, but watching passerby with a warding look that says, keep moving. It was never his cousin, Varus says quietly, but an ally that apparently needed some shelter, but either it was never this ally or it whatever this thing was, killed said ally. His loss is unfortunate, but ultimately unimportant. Well, either way, that's one less working hand for a business, and just cash and just grimaces, waiting waiting to she's see right where right. Nokri is. Oh, she's already behind him. She's very sneaky for a six-foot dragon lady. And male. <laughs> Nakri is just taking in what she's hearing. Makes no reaction to Relian's voice. 
but uh, keeps an eye on Epiphany before looking about. Is there anywhere else hmm, safer to complete this? I'd rather... This is rather out in the open and would draw far more suspicion than one of us carrying him elsewhere. The attunement process has already begun. We Fair wait until it is finished. Brought you to us. This is good. We are Golor. We are looking for a stone gate that leads underground. We think perhaps the between the mage tower and the hall of justice. We must be able to have heavy carts brought through it. Dark, shadowy creature spoke to Staggett. An investigator was removed and nearly stopped the plot. Varys, hearing his name, turns to see... All over. Uh, it turns to see Epiphany kind of cradling his head and speaking. Uh, he moves to be within earshot of the multifaceted individual. Uh, it is not until after Effie is done speaking that Varys realizes he was referred to by name. Uh, from Epiphany as well as Relian now. A, a, a stone gate? Yeah, it is a very weird day. <laughs> a stone gate? Heavy carts? Why do we need to bring carts and stash it? Isn't that the investigator that has been riding our tails this whole time? I'm honestly surprised to hear that he's involved with all this. Uh, do you know who it was that we removed? Ep uh, Galore? Oh, I think I think Galore doesn't have to actually answer that. That one's fairly simple. Do a little bit of trace history about things that have happened under Stagit's watch. The only investigator that we know of that was removed from anything dealing with just about anything is actually right here at the beginning of this alley. And then uh, Epiphany speaks with uh, Mariel's voice. Yes, Lady Nakri. No. <laughs> <laughs> we are Golor. We are Epiphany. Ve <laughs> Closed mind. No. We, we do not need carts. Only know that there was someone investigating a noble of the city who was secreting away many carts of something through a stone door and this investigator was removed by a dark twisted creature at this point cashin is already back around the party and he and he's looking down at a at epiphany and he's still clutching his head Say that, say that again one more time. The part about the investigator and his eyes have a sharpness to them that is rare to see when outside of combat. Well, just just so one does not have to repeat themselves. Technically, we would have two sources of sources of investigation. Um, Shepherd. You say your wife was murdered, correct? Indeed she was. Oh. There, there was images, right. thoughts, past, tower, dark slinking creature, a woman in a dark purple cape. We saw twisting pale stonework entwined with trees and elves. Then an older noble, a dark slaking creature, the noble motioned to city guards and they dragged heavy carts. It was a stone gate. No, no, no. Not led underground. The stone gate was underground. Man ran and the sleeking creature killed the guards and demanded to know where the carts were taken. All the guards refused. The mis misshapen thing stayed. No. 
No, the one called Staggett was there. Staggett aided the noble in sealing away the cards. Saget removed the invader, investigator, Vane Leaper. No. No, the creature is Staggett. Staggett killed the... Cre the creature killed Staggett and took his place. Varys turns to Cassian. Uh, tell us again where things went wrong for you in the guard. Weren't you investigating some sort of warehouse that exploded? It was in the... Cashin still clutching his head, trying to remember. It was in the dark ward, but nothing was there. I was given that assignment right before I started investigating break-ins at the palace. <clears throat> Staget was in the guard before I even joined the watch. Did I even meet the real Davin? Did he? His he... he's clutching his head even more now. Did he even exist as a person before I met him? Back in Epiphany's mind, in response to what was said, Golor takes his seat from the mental desk and nods, aided the noble in hiding. To then Epiphany's the creature mind. killed him and took his Many place. Many wanted the wealth. Depending so hidden on when it was before dark occurred, she claimed may have known real close long. was the inspector. Aware was he that others sought it, and he did warn. So it was hidden deeply. Once the dark palais fed, however, knowledge of the seekers had to be ended, discredited. So the accuser it now became. But more than one knew. A second followed a faithful servant of Waterdeep and wife of an unquestionable. This one could not be discredited, so she was killed to silence the knowledge, and lies were spread about the open lord, driving him away and out of the city as well. And as this all happens, Cashin himself finally connects the dots, and he starts looking very, very angry. Those bastards. They set me up. They slandered me. They crippled me. They even... I don't even remember half of what I know anymore. And he just starts slinking against the wall in his realization. We speak to ourselves and we listen. The knowledge flows clean. The plot to claim the wealth of the city spread wide. It began with four, now only two remain. And one of them was the closest so long ago. The dark slinking creature seeks the treasure. But Never Ember took the blame and did not take it. With him, he sealed it away so that the four players could not claim it. The slinking creature has opposed us because we were repeatedly closing in on it. It ever hunted and discredited those who learned too much. And Epiphany's head slowly turns to Shepard. One of them, a wife and faithful of the city, she was trusted by too many, and could not be proven a liar, so the slinking creature killed her. It was planned to be the same as with Never Ember. Um, he just looks down to the ground and then pulls his hood up over his face. So what I'm gathering here is that two stories are more connected than they all originally seemed. Shepard, I do believe it is time to be more honest about what happened with your wife. 
pointing out some of the facts, you were investigating something and then were removed from it, and other people died. It's sounding to me that perhaps we had all the clues all along, but we were looking in the wrong directions. We assumed that things were to be removed for various reasons. Cashin, I, I am starting to get the sensation that you do know more than you remember, and they think you know way more than you possibly do, and for that they are trying to remove you in a similar fashion to others. Cashin. The journal assassin. He, I don't think he was just targeting elves randomly. I think he was looking for you. The others Down. were made to make it look like a mass murder rather than a hit. I wasn't meant to survive the warehouse. And Cashin's mind drifts back, back years ago on that fateful night. Guards and watchmen had cornered this would-be gang to a warehouse, and with his adventuring experience, Cashin snuck in to catch them by surprise, so their attention would be drawn from the doors. But when he dropped down behind them and demanded that they surrendered, they turned around and he was surprised by not, not criminal thugs, but ordinary men and women gagged and their hound, hands bound with weapons in them. They had a wild, pleading look in their eyes as they turned to him, and before he could question why this was going on, a figure had stepped out of the shadows, a very familiar face. He lit a torch and dropped in a line of black powder, which trailed towards a group of barrels, and then nothing. tried to finish the job that night, Cashin said quietly. Inara was a bard to everyone that knew her. To those that knew the real Inara, she was an investigator for the Harpers. The people who knew her true purpose in life weren't many, but the few that did were people that mattered the most in this city. The moneylender. The Black Staff, people whose words are ironclad, just as hers were, just as mine are. And then I would look over to Cash and I'm sorry that you got involved the way you were, my friend. It looks like we were both set up by this creature that wears Thagot's face as a mask. So, let me get this straight. All of this, from the very beginning, was a setup? From long before we even all knew each other? What is in that vault that is so valuable that Asmodeus himself has sent servants to acquire it? He can't just be after gold, can he? Money makes things happen, my dear sir. Whether you realize it or not, money can buy more power and more prestige than one could even think of. And if I know anything about those who lust after money, well, it is quite possible. Whether we like it or not, young Varys, fate has entwined us in its snare. The second we step foot into the troll skull, that place, for whatever reason, is a focal point of destiny, and we walked blindly into its trap. Us, when we received the deed, you, when you became our friend. And as the king of the hells, and whatever he wants, it could be anything. There could be something quite precious in that vault. Or, who knows, maybe he just wants to buy something from Mamon. He's always looking for gold. Cashin is now just talking out loud to himself. Ever since then, I stopped being myself. Like, a part of me was ripped out. I don't remember much. 
but in this, in place of the man I was, there's just this fool who can't think too much without his head splitting open, who has to drink the pain away, and who rushes into things like a maniac. All it does is prove what people say, that I'm a reckless fool. In Epiphany's mind, Golor was playing. He spun in a, in a now revolving chair like a child discovering a new toy as he kept creating new objects in Epiphany's mind. He revolved several times before focusing on a bowl of sweets that had suddenly appeared on the desk. The Dark Lord under the Dark Lord seeks the wealth. With it, he can buy what is needed to maintain the contract or perhaps even end it. The debt has shown itself to be higher than he wishes to repay without assistance. The next will be closer and more dear to his black heart than he is prepared to pay. He could pay it for them, but he fears the dark while he tries to bargain with it. Oh, this will take some adjusting. The mind is larger than we had anticipated. But no v closed mind. It is merely wealth, but even that has value to the Devil Lord. It can be used to maintain contracts, but Dark Lord could use it to pay his debts, but is fearful. We, no, we do not think there is anything inherently magical to this treasure, but if we to assume it to be the water deep dragon treasure, then it would be vast. Well, I suppose the question then becomes. Who finds it first, and what do we do when we find when we actually do find it? Give it back to to the city, Cashin says as his migraine finally passes. Oh, how pitiably noble! Whatever you think of me, I'm loyal to the city. Whatever I am, I'll always fight for it. Even after they turn their backs, their collective backs on you. Not the Open every... Lord didn't. And neither did the Black Staff. Not everyone in this city is as uncaring as this creature that wears Dajit's mask or face as a mask. And then I suppose we have to figure out what to do about that. Now don't we? Granted, I'm all for pulling things out of the shadows and into the light, but we will have to be careful about it. Epiphany. This Golor has quite a bit of information. Does it know what this Dark Lord under the Dark Lord is? We are assuming it is the Lord of Devils. Sorry, apologies. It is... Golor is amused right at this moment. I'm glad someone is. There are many for it to speak with. And it's seeking novel experience. Calm, 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 calm yourself. Calm yourself, Epiphany. All will be well. And if I may be so bold as to attempt to answer the question, it could be the one claiming to be Manchun has found himself a dark master. Perhaps the Devil Lord is the only actual player, and the four are all 
dancing to his tune. Oh. Ah. Epiphany. Well, he, he made a bowl of food and now we are hungry. It will will get a snack after this, Epiphany. My, 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 I promise. Just try to keep him entertained for right now. And, well, when it comes to players in the cosmic game, it's hard to get one higher than the King of the Hells. We will attempt. Golor knows much. We will... We could either apprehend the slinking creature or we could really we, we will confer with ourselves and uh, Mariel in uh, Epiphany's mind walks up to Golor uh, Mr. Golor do you happen to know exactly where we should take you or is it supposed to be guesswork on our part Golor stopped, his hand halfway to his mouth with one of the candies. The old tower, the one in the dark purple cloak will... Uh, his head tips as if listening to sounds only he can hear. That woman may know where the keys now lie. She does not fully understand their use, but given more time, she might discover it. She also desires the wealth, but for what purpose is not known. Golor finally pops the treat in its mouth happily, then adds, An enemy she may not be, but the tower is where it began or ended. Knowing is easy. Entrance is hard. We must go to the tower. That is where the path begins. Seek the woman with a dark purple cloak. Golor is very heavy on us. We will endure it, but it is different. Mm -hmm. The dark purple cloak woman has the keys, but may not know that they are the keys. She she wants the treasure as well, apparently. It will be finding the entrances simple, but opening and passing will be quite difficult. <laughs> And it is at this point that we pick back up with tonight's adventure. We are in the alley. All of you are gathered together. You have the basic information from Golor. What are you going to do now? This brings me back to my original question. Does this all need to be done tonight? I know that most of us are fairly spent on our abilities. We... We must get the orb to the old mage tower and collect what the Black Viper has before night's end, at the very least, or it falls down. The King of F Flames wins. Yes, time is of the essence now that thing has escaped. It's going to alert its masters, no matter what. The slinking creature will not rest. We must go. Uh, during this time, would we have been able to have a short rest? Woo! I'm spending a hit days. Oh, geez, I don't even have what my maximum hit points is supposed to be. I'll I'll be spending hit dice. I just need to figure out what my actual maximum is supposed to be before I spend them. Uh, uh, Apple, you're a little more hmm? Go ahead. Apple, you're a little more familiar with, with this than I do. Is a short rest... Uh get back, um, it doesn't get back spell slots for sorcerers, but does it, does it get back sorcery points? Nope. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Hey, I'm, no. I'm only down two sorcery points I, and one I'm, spell slot. I'm, I'm in a I'm, good I'm, place I'm, right now. I'm, I'm sitting here with two first level spot, slots left and one sorcery point. <laughs> well, looks like I'm going to be doing some heavy hitting again. Okay. We will have to be creative. <laughs> one spell total. I but I get my key points back. 
It's okay, we'll just Good. embarrass and merit he'll solo everything because monks are overpowered. <laughs> well, I mean, don't die because I'm not going to be able to heal you. I only have one spell. When have you ever? Brutal Smasher, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I had to. I, I took offense. I took. I take offense, good sir. Well, you can take the fence, but please, please don't take the front door. Boys. <laughs> he made the joke that I wasn't going to. Uh, I honestly don't like rushing into situations that I barely know and barely think we'll walk out of without a conflict, but if we have to. <sighs> At least some of us can run while the others hold things back. At this point, I've zoomed the map out in order for the viewers to be able to see the distance that will be involved. The Troll Skull and the group and what you have been going on is up in the north portion of this section of Waterdeep map that I'm using on this thing and you are clear up at the north end of this portion up by where the Troll Skull uh, Inn is in the Troll Skull Alley and the actual Mage's Tower is clear in the south end of it, clear down at the bottom end of this section of the map. So there's quite a long section. It's almost two miles that are involved in what is going on. So it would take you the better part of an hour to walk and or run what is going on here. It's about, it's about a mile, eight, mile and four ten, four fifths. Yeah. We could uh, see if there are any like carts. We could maybe like a hawk cart. That's yeah. right. There are always hacks for rent in the city. They are for rent for one gold for this distance that you're talking about, which is a fair distance. So, who's up for a carriage ride? My treat, he says as he, he adopts back into his familiar accent. I will uh, put my hand on Lillian's forehead and go, Are you feeling all right? That is not like you at all. Uh, he actually places his uh, hands on his chest and does a quick spin before thrusting his arms out in a dramatic manner. Oh, sugar scales, I knew you cared, but I've never felt better. Come on, I'm clear-headed, or as clear-headed as I can get. Why, I feel as good as a shock knee in a thunderstorm. I can't say the same for me or Epi. I need to stop by my dad's house. Briefly, I just need to grab some things. They may help us. Help us. They may not. But if we don't have them, they certainly won't help us. Uh, Brillian will grab Barris by the shoulders and start shaking him while Stage whispering to him, Make haste, young blue boy! <laughs> I thought that would be a nice ad. Um, I will be right back. And he, like, cartoon... Exit! Stage left! It's okay, we can keep going our normal speed, and then, like, he'll just get it and catch <laughs> up. Like, walk up to us. Yeah. yeah. He did, he's, he's, just, he's just, like, beside the cart power walking. OP. How's it going? Good monks are OP. I have a running speed of 50. God. <laughs> yes, using dashes, Varus would quite easily be able to get back to Trollskull Alley, pick up what he needs and get back to the party by the time they hit the main street. But what exactly is it you need? Uh, he asked to get... I... Why is my inventory suddenly completely empty? It was a Glock. Yeah. He was yeah. going to go get a Glock. <laughs> I'm um, going to get some brass knuckles. <laughs> he, was... he was trying to get uh, the Copsable Pole that i spoken with you about earlier. He was also going to get... Uh, I think I'd already gotten this, but I might not have. Um, manacles, a chain, as well as another bag of caltrops. Kinky. Kinky. Oh, this, this, is a, this is a weekend night, isn't it? Mm. Hey, it's Sunday for a few more hours. While um, <laughs> Bears is gone, I'm going to uh, talk to Shepard quietly 
and motion towards the um, stone Epi now has and has to keep. Uh, I'm also going to like motion for Epi to kind of like hold it, hide in his cloak, and I'm actually going to like. <laughs> We're bas I'm basically stealthily indicating um, to Shepard, hey, to keep up appearances, you want to put the fake in my chest? Uh, I grab the, the fake stone and uh, uh, hand it to Relian, or I guess hold it before he, so that he can open his chest. Okay. That way, you know, if anything happens, it gives the bad guys a very obvious target. Well, as we knew, it was the Castle Lantern's men that knew that I had it. I mean, but to be honest, who are they gonna... Go oh, actually, hold on, I've got a great idea. Uh, Relian's going to put the chest down that now has the stone. He's going to untie the rope from his wrist, and he's going to tie it around Shepard's wrist. What are you doing? It's your responsibility now. You gave it to a man that can't really carry a chest to begin with. And you expect me to drag it. It it weighs like seven pounds in total. You're you're talking to a man that only has eight strength. <laughs> I have eight str strength, so don't you try to pull that crap. It, it, um, yes, it, I have eight strength. Oh so, so is Epiphany attuned to to the stone? Yes. Okay, but is, seriously, is Shepard rejecting this? I am untying the rope, or at least trying to with one hand, because it's harder to do it with one hand than with two. Rallion's just looking at you. This is hilarious. You know what? While they're busy arguing about this, Epiphany goes to the road and like lifts to show some leg in order to get up. <laughs> oh no! Cashin, I mean, while well, Cashin is just uh, helping uh, a shepherd tie untie the rope, and he's looking at Epi, it's like, oh my god, did he did he stitch that one on? Uh, a hack swerves, <laughs> hack swerves to avoid him and crashes. We have a ride now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Fine, I'll just take this. Relian picks up the chest and just slings it on his shoulder. Oh my goodness. Boys, please, let's not cause any more of a scene than we normally do. Relian's just going to slowly point at the semi-crashed cart. That is a scene, yes. <laughs> let's think. Vom let's get out of here before we lose any more time. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we just uh, did. <laughs> as we're all climbing into the cart, Relian is going to um, uh, slip a gold into the pocket of the driver, and he's going to hold up two more, and he says, the old mage tower. And these two, one is for if you get there, get us there speedy, the other one is to get us there, no questions asked. I'll throw in a third if you forget that you took us there. And, and uh, Cashin holds out three, and I'll give you these so you can have a lot of drinks so that even if you... so that you won't remember. Guys, there's something called haggling. Hey, we got a strong hand. Get, get in the cart, please. How about I carry the the the, the, the chest? Is there I, I, enough? I don't have it anymore, so you can go ahead. Uh, yes, the hack will hold all of you, and the driver is very impressed. Yes, sir, I'll get you there right away! Mage hey, Tower, get, quickly. Five get, gold get, for you if you get us there. <laughs> At this point, he's so impressed, he's running down pedestrians. Oh, pardon me, ma'am, pardon me. Is there enough room in the cart for all of us to fit? Okay. Big spender. Uh, while they're going, Garrus will be keeping a lookout on like the alleys, the roofs, to see if anything is looking like it's going to jump out at them. 
and he tries to like settle into a spot and recommune with Golor to basically just ask, okay, when we get there, what are we looking for? <laughs> like, is is it just a chick with the purple cloak or? Yeah, basically, he will just keep putting this image of. You feel a sense that he is. He doesn't know the answer. That he needs to connect the dots himself. That you have to be. That the, the path of fate says you have to be at this tower with this woman and the pieces will fall into place. But that's what he keeps imaging to you. You know. And then the in the mind space elf woman looks and says, you need to understand that we absolutely despise fate. <laughs> Epiphany comes back out. We will just have to find purple cloak. Yay. So yeah, uh, Relian has given the small chest to Nokri, who can probably carry it better than all of them combined. And as he's getting out, he's, uh, he, as he's getting out, he's... Uh, he waves to Cashin and says, "Okay, CC, pay the man." Cashin produces the gold, as promised, and it's five gold. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got to the tower. <laughs> Dumb question. If I tie the chest to my shield uh, dominant arm, can I still use the shield or is that going to be an issue? What, what size is the shield? Um, typical shield. Uh, I mean, is it a buckler or is it a, a man size shield? Uh, I wouldn't say man size shield. It, it, um, it's like a small medium size, like, like kind of oh, something yeah. like, like you'd see in, in most fantasy video games when you're seeing a tank with a shield. Like not like a kite huge, shield, but, huh? Like a kite like shield. shield. Yeah, it's called a kite shield. It's shaped kind of like a kite. Oh, okay. That. Yeah, sorry, I I didn't hear actually hear the word he used. That's so why I was like confused for a moment. Thank you. Um, and you're trying to do what with your offhand or whatever? No, oh, I'm tying the chest to my offhand so at least I can use uh, the Warhammer and not be interrupted by having the chest in my Uh You'd have to put it in something because the chest would weigh about five pounds and mm. the, the Warhammer, that's too much to juggle with just one hand free for the Warhammer. Let's just remove the the chest, and I'll go ahead and open it and take the stone back out, put it back in my sleeve. Well, it knew that I it knew that I already had it to begin with. Fair enough. You're just gonna have to stay close to me then. Okay. So as you come up to this tower, the tower is not in terribly bad shape, but it has seen better days. It is a a house with a living area in it, and then this large, somewhat conical-shaped tower, very typically a mage tower of several levels in it. And one of the things that you notice as you come up to it is that there is a like a gathering on the front steps. There is indeed a woman in a very elegant and uh, embroidered, uh, almost gold embroidered, it looks like. It's hard to tell in the dark, but you can see a little bit of sparkle from the street lamps, which make you think that this is some kind of precious thread of some kind that's embroidering it. So she must be reasonably well-to-do. She is standing on the steps. Uh, The front door of the tower is open behind her, and she is talking to a group of four individuals that have that look about them as 
being Water Davian officials. That kind of looking down their nose like something smells a little bad that they all have. And she is holding a discussion with them about something that is going on. Do I recognize this woman? I uh, give me a an intelligence roll and let me see how much you would remember about her. Of no, she happens to have run in slightly different circles than you did, so you don't particularly uh, recognize her. The, there is something, however, um, would Relian give me a roll with advantage? Intelligence? Yes. Okay. Watch me roll a two, because that's the first roll of the night, and that seems to be a thing. Told you. You, you don't know her, per se, but you kind of, as you look at her, the cut of her cape and various things, something stirs in your mind and you can't quite connect it because it's not the same. It's There's a difference, but she sparks something in your mind that you can't connect. You're not quite sure. So she she's not in the same getup as, say, the young lady we met in front of the statue? No. She, this is a but... very... Th that, that cape for that woman was... Uh, very much darker purple, and it was um, of a common cloth, a very, wouldn't stand out in a crowd. Uh, Rowling's is going to let his eyes linger on the scene, specifically the woman, if the others notice that's, uh, that's their thing. Cash and will, uh, Look towards the party and uh, whisper. You think we? You think me or someone else should sneak up and eavesdrop? Oh, pick me! Pick me! Do we have time to eavesdrop? Well, we're definitely not going to be able to get past them unless you know of a back entrance by any chance. I can get relatively close if we want to find out what it's about. If they're working for Staget or not Nega Staget, then it would be better to know beforehand. We, they're at the yeah. entrance of the tower, right? Yes. You can see some people behind or inside the building. You can't make out what they are. They are just waiting, it looks like, inside. She is talking with this group of people that is outside and appear to be um, officials who are telling it, it, it looks like a conversation not unlike the one Nakri had when the inn was shut down. Right, and then for the uh, the, the, inn, the tower, do I know if it's currently owned by someone? No, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, okay. Cashin is going to elect himself to get closer and try and overhear things. All right, give me a, um, a roll, please. And then a uh, stealth, stealth roll. Yeah. Let me get. Oof. Ugh. Gods. Off Everyone's to a great rolling. start tonight, folks. That Minus great that start thing. happened hours ago. Yeah, she watches as you come up, and she, she, her eyes are actually following you as you come up. You try to stay to the shadows. The uh, officials have their back turned to you, and they're far more focused on her and whatever they are saying to her. She doesn't look upset that you are coming up. In fact, she, she looks rather bored and smirks at you, and you are clearly able as you get within range to hear the discussion which is somewhat louder than polite the officials are have their arms crossed and they are saying to her i 
understand, milady. I completely understand. In spite of your standing, Lady Rescuro, I am afraid you must, by required law, bring the tower up to standard and code for pure safety reasons, if nothing else. We don't want any of the bricks falling on passers-by because you have not maintained the roof or re-mortared between the stones. This will have to be done, and you know this is required. She rolls her eyes and says, of course, it will be done, and it will be brought up to code, but I cannot do it tonight, and I cannot do it with a snap of my fingers. I will have to see to the various guilds, or do you wish me to do it myself? That is not what we mean, and you know it. It must. You have dawdled quite long enough. You have owned this for nearly two weeks and you have done nothing whatsoever. You have not contacted any guilds. You have not purchased any of the proper payments or papers that are needed for this process. We wish to see progress, and we wish to see it within the next week. Are we understood? Of course, Lord Inspector. I will make sure to see to the guilds tomorrow morning first thing. And uh, she kind of winks at Elliston a little bit. And, Fashion. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Old habits Homeowners. die hard. Uh, Homeowners associations suck. Yeah. And uh, she, uh, she says, of, of course, Lord Inspector, it will be done, as you say. I will be down there within the week to show that I have acquired the proper persons to do the things and I will purchase the necessary paperwork to proceed with what I have to do in quadruplicate as you have already mentioned to me. And this man uh, huffs a bit and says, if you don't mind, we'd like to step inside and see just what is required. And she starts to lift a hand, but finally just kind of goes, all right, whatever, and allows them to step past her into the lower level of the tower. And she nods at whoever these people are that were standing behind her in it, like, go ahead, let them pass, sort of thing. And then she turns and looks at Elliston with a cocked eyebrow, like, and what can I do for you? Feigning the obvious fact that he was discovered, uh, Cashin uh, just drops the facade and uh, casually approaches. We're, I'm here on the subject of keys, or, yes, keys, I think is what was said. Keys to open something. Keys. Three in particular. There is, she started to speak, and she went silent and clapped her mouth quite shut. I assure you that I know nothing that you're talking about. I have the key to this tower, if that's what you mean. So the nobles uh, or the uh, city officials have gone inside at this point, right? They're not far Cash behind her, yes. Cashin is going to cast a tech BS. Is she wearing anything purple? Yeah, it's a very dark purple, but it is a an elegant embroidered, gold embroidered purple robe. With a hood. But the hood is slightly pat. It's not like, you know, covering her face. It's pushed back, and you can see she's an elegant, very beautiful nobleman. So. Did we, did we hear the inspectors say her name? Yes, I would, say, I would say that you guys weren't that terribly far from the, you know, you were stopped kind of looking about the city like you were sightseeing and trying to look like you weren't looking, but 
nevertheless, I would think that from the fact that the voices were somewhat raised that you probably would hear them unless you were clanging your head with a tin pot at the moment. Could you repeat any names that were said? I'm sorry, I was... They called her somewhere. Lady Rescuro. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> the, the second Relian hears Rescuro, uh, um, he does that thing where, you know, they kind of half fold their arms and one arm is just in front of his cloaked face and, you know, he's trying to be inconspicuous, but really being in really, really conspicuous. He's just like, da, 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 da. He does, I'm, he does I'm that, going to, does that uh, thing, that Relian thing that Relian only does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull Relian in front of me and kind of put him, kind of use, not basically Nocker's going to use her size as kind of like a shield for his expression. And in a very low voice, and that's the stage minister, uh, and just exactly why are you looking like you're about to dance out of your own skin? Well, first of all, that'd be a great trick. I might have to work on a spell that can make someone do that, but uh, well, later. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm acting perfectly normal. This is normal. This is the new normal. This is my normal. Everyone should conform yeah. to my normal. Varys cast detect BS. <laughs> <laughs> same, same with That's a thing. No, well <laughs> done, Ellie. Thing. Um, so, is, on oh, the subject of sorry, um, on the subject of casting BS. Yeah, your role was not high enough to know what she she was. Uh, she was just looking at you with this deadpan look, but you don't know what she was. Whether she was trying to relay a message or not trying to relay a message. As for Shepard, he he pretty much sees the stars and the universe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very good at sussing outliers. Does uh, Nakri or uh, Varys want to try to detect BS? Sure. <laughs> I would. I was just gonna go, but based off of the fact that she knows me well enough. <laughs> you believe him wholeheartedly. You're like a child. <laughs> so like, innocent. So, He's so innocent. Uh, let's see. Just continuing check. to play the part. I'm actually gonna say, <laughs> considering how well she knows him, I'm I'm willing to give you advantage on this with the DM's blessing. Yeah, I would think that he would be acting just really strange so it would be uh, okay. pretty obvious that I've actually got I've actually, I've actually got a fun idea um with the DM's permission uh Shepard and uh Nakri do you want to roll me a hist uh, history roll real quick cuz this could be fun yeah, and again I mean, it's a very low needs, thing so don't yeah, worry he need just need to see if you remember something okay above a 10 that's plenty for me um, you remember, the both of you remember, that during the trial of that, that drow bastard, Relian mm -hmm. introduced himself as Relian Roscuro. Did you just use the name on random, or do you actually know that person? I have a balavava. Honesty, Relian, please, we don't have the time for this. Let's just say I have a very large family and things with them are a little tense Relian when you say family do you really mean family or do you mean family no. what did I say yeah the minute he talked about family they say oh no more cousins <laughs> okay I, I know I haven't exactly painted myself in the most trustworthy light but no that oh, really that... That, no, but I, I'm actually being completely honest right now. That uh, that actually is one of my cousins from Silvery Moon. Ah. Oh, no. they don't look like a dwarf. Oh, you you are. Oh, no. So you truly are related to them, friend Relian. Yes, I'm a Rascuro, big magical noble family Epiphany. from Silvery Moon. Let's all make a big deal about it. Oh, you little black. Got a evil time. <laughs> Epiphany walks <laughs> up and puts a hand. On Relian's shoulder. Oh, friend Relian, you, you have family. You are all the family that we have. 
if we had family, we would speak to them. And Epiphany tries to heel kick him forward. <laughs> Dude. I, I, I'm, going to just, um, I'm going to just put my hands on each side of Rebellion's shoulders and just lift him up and walk forward. No, no, no! Wait, wait! We can discuss with like so, civilized so, so, beings. So, so, so would this be an athletics check with advantage? <laughs> because I we're helping each it. other. A, one of you is doing the help action. Yes, that's a, that's a help action. You get a D four. It's Epiphany's a help action. The fifth I've seen one. Epiphany's helping. So, so athletics on this. That'll work. Um. You're welcome. Yeah, I know. I, the one time I actually rolled low on my athletics. What the hell? <laughs> Wait, I'm not tackling a person. That's what. <laughs> so, post G. I, I wonder how this will go with my negative <laughs> one in strength. Natural 20. <laughs> if I get a 19, yeah, like a nat 20, like this is. Oh, never mind. Not bad. So, no, not bad. He's, so he's, he's resisting. Rallying is just kind of like squirming. Squirming and struggling, like, yeah. We can discuss this like. We, we can discuss this like civilized beings. Really, you be the dragon, I'll be the goblin. We can discuss this. I'll get a table. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be made out of mahogany. Okay. On a scale of one to they're trying to actually kill you, uh, where do you put yourself, dear? Uh, well... That's all the you No. Know, some people... In their deluded craziness, think I'm a little odd. N none so more than my family. They don't like talking or interacting with me if they can avoid it. Relin, let me just tell you, from one black sheep to another in a family, screw what the hell that they think and make yourself up in front and let them notice you. Now get up there and deal with it. We'll be here to back you up. There's that. We'll be right behind. That's <laughs> ten feet away. <laughs> would, you, would, you, would, you, would, would you prefer us to be adjacent to you, friend? Really? Social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> would you prefer us to be? Would you prefer us to be one movement away, one movement space away from you, friend? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, they, and oh, thus people. it was that in Waterdeep they drew large squares on the pavement that were five feet apart, <laughs> and that's why ever and after in all the D and D, &D games and you have the tabaxi stayed in them. Put, put, put me down. I'll I'll go talk to her. At you the know? very least, I can lord over the fact I'm a better magician than her, and that's a big thing in our family. Well, you're not alone, and we do need answers, and they may provide them. So, let us um, let us let cooler heads prevail in this situation. Don't get too cocky until we get everything we need. By this time, <laughs> with what's been going on, she has lifted her eyes from Elliston, who seems to be asking some questions that uh, she doesn't know the answer to, apparently, and she is now staring at this argument going on among a, another group of strangers yeah. that are standing <laughs> just outside the hat. Very confused. Uh, Cashin uh, notices her, her, where her eyes are and looks back towards the, uh, the group and how odd they're acting. It's like, don't worry about them. They're acting the usual, so... I'm being very kind when I say this. I need, we need, I need to enter this tower, and they don't have to enter, but may, well, actually they do, but we need to get some, we need to get three keys, and Cashin's going to try and be very persuasive. Roll persuasion. Hey! She mm -hmm. speaks to you through her teeth, and her lips do not move. I understand this. This is the improper time for this to be discussed. Are you aware who's inside that tower? Honestly, I'm not. The High Lord Inspector is giving me 
no end of problems. Please, can we have this discussion after they leave? Cashin is going to look at the uh, his party and back at her and says, uh, I can promise you a couple of minutes that that probably is going to be longer depending on what they're going to talk to you about. I don't expect they are going to be here very long, the inspectors, that is. I am hoping they will get their paperwork done and depart. Do we know who the High Lord Inspector is? Yeah. Uh, not by perhaps acquaintance. Uh, he would be somewhat known as the person in charge of the the inspector and coding office for the buildings in Waterdeep, and you would know the, of the office and the fact that it exists. Uh, oh. The the uh, I would say possibly Nakri would have Nakri give me a history role. It is very with advantage. It is very likely you encountered him in the process of the Troll Skull renovation. Uh, yeah, you uh, you did not speak directly with him. However, you would recognize that individual as being the pompous individual who ran the office through which you had to sign all the documents and fill everything out and talk with a whole bunch of clerks in the office. So you would recognize that these people are from the code inspector's office. Uh, curiosity question. Did uh, I have to also potentially deal with them in regards to getting the tavern back open uh, when I was there with, uh, or at least going through those channels with uh, Silvermane? I would say that the likelihood would be very large. I'm going to give it a yes. Uh, that probably okay. you had to return to that office a second time and verify that the street repairs in no way impacted the safety of patrons within the tavern, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you probably would again have dealt with his office. Again, he is the pompous type and he tends to keep to his office. So the mere fact that he is out here arguing with her would tend to indicate the office is losing patience because they wouldn't send him out unless they were really tired of the argument. I'm just, uh, so I would have seen, I would have seen some of those individuals from my vantage point, or? As you were, uh, you mean here? Or in the office? Uh, from where we are outside right now, just so I yeah, can you would have, saying something up. He's not wearing a hood or anything like that. He's dressed in his officious robes that are, bear the seal of the code inspector's office, but uh, you would have recognized his face as being the individual that you dealt that, that was in charge of the office you had to deal with. He he didn't consider you important enough to deal with himself, so he just handed your paperwork over to lesser clerks. Mm. One of whom, a couple of whom, in fact, are with him at this moment. Oh, I thought I'd recognize that face. Crap. Well, we might have to take a small detour after all. Revian, you're saved for about five minutes. Woo! And don't count yourself lucky. There's something a bit more deadly out over there than, uh, what we're actually dealing with. Ugh. Inspectors. Bureaucrats. Mm, <laughs> yes, there's most of them. So? But they serve a purpose. Bureaucrats. Uh, thinking out of characterly, um... How much influence would Mert have with this group of people, the inspectors and whatnot? Basically, any of your leads would have a lot of pull. Whether you simply mentioning the name would have pull would be another matter. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of, like, trying to get them out of here under the, the guise of Mert is requesting their presence or something like that. Uh, that would probably fall under uh, uh, lies with a city official 
distracting a city official from doing his business, et cetera, that would probably fall under some that's of those true. nasty laws. Yeah, that's true. All right. It was just me thinking aloud. Lady Roscuro um, taps her foot with her arms crossed, uh, and she's just like looking up at the night sky, like, is this ever going to end? Finally, she turns and dis just disappears a little, a couple steps inside the door, and you hear her go, Lord Inspector, I am quite sure that at this late hour you have better places to be and far more important individuals to deal with. Certainly you have a hot meal waiting for you at home. Why don't we continue this discussion later when I can arrive with the proper paperwork in your office and you do not have to inconvenience yourself to come to my tower. And you hear some muffled sounds. Yes, yes, I know I am two weeks overdue in filing the proper paperwork, but I assure you, sir, I will rectify it with morning's light. However, if you do not allow me to rest, I will be unable to complete that. Could you please possibly continue this tomorrow so we can all rest? And there's a long gap where you get the feeling he's probably not going to just leave because she's trying to usher him out. He's trying to leave on his own time. But eventually he swishes out with his clerks behind him and uh, heads out there. Uh, he motions with one of the clerks who walks around the corner of the building and comes out leading a private carriage that has been tethered somewhere and assists the Lord Inspector General to get into the carriage and then gets in uh, and, and, and takes the reins and they proceed to start off. Cashin's going to take a very good look at that uh, carriage. All right. Uh, he would recognize it as belonging to the inspector, uh, code inspector general, who is a very wealthy man. Uh, he has taken lots of bribes under the table. It's pretty well known, and probably part of the problem here is some of the bribes haven't been passed under the table, is part of the upset. Uh, hmm. I think I would like to try to take a look at them as well, see if they are holding anything that may tie them to the castle enters. All right. Like if, the, so if I notice anything like the dagger or anything that would be, that would have the castle enter symbol on it. Go ahead, roll a perception roll. <clears throat> yeah, not as good. And I, I see nothing, that. there is nothing obliquely or obviously that you can see visible that would tie them. The only symbol of any kind is there is a Water Davian logo uh, it, with gold and um, sapphire kind of looking stuff on the side that's the official shield of Waterdeep that is on the side of this carriage that is his personal carriage. It's a blue and silver Waterdeep symbol. Well. With that, Cashin uh, looks towards uh, Lady Rescuel and uh, says to her, well, now that that's out of the way, I think uh, we can enter at your disclosure. Why don't you bring your friends in, dear? I don't want to be talking in the street. Oh, and, nods and uh, to you, and she motions to four guards that you can now see are in there. Once uh, the company has stepped inside, would you please guard the door? And if you hear any untoward sounds, would you please come to my aid at your earliest convenience? And the um, four guards step outside and kind of step aside so the group of you can walk up the steps and into the tower. And you notice they are wearing uh, a tabard with a what only Relian, there's a symbol on the tabard that
that Relian would recognize as a Roscuro crest. And so you step inside. Well, welcome, dears. Please do shut the door behind you. Forgive our uh, rather abrupt appearance, my dear. Uh, we are given the impression that uh, certain things are a matter of a time of time is of the essence, and things just could not be delayed. Yes, it seems tonight that we have many people who time has been delayed too long and must report to me now just exactly what is this discussion about. Oh, was it five keys? Three. Three keys, I see. We are going to have to work on your ability to not give all the details out in the open for the sake of quickness. That, uh, so I didn't say what the key. I didn't say what the keys were for. Given that what we're doing, it's something that you really shouldn't mention keywords or keys. Her eyes flick back and forth between the two of you as you discuss this, and you Lady can Nokri. see very focused eyes on you. She is not puzzled. Lady Nokri, Cashin. Oh, let's just get this over with. Uh, Relian is going to... Relian is going to reach up. He's going to grasp his hood. And he's going to flick it back. Hey. He has a face. No, he doesn't. Um, this you really can all right. now... See the mystical shadows that uh, fill Cloak vanish quite suddenly. And what you're seeing is the youngish, maybe between the mid to late twenties, uh, face of a handsome man. Uh, he's has the sharp features and the tapered ears of someone who is definitely not fully elf, but seems to have elven heritage. You can now see his eyes glowing all the more brightly out of his hood. Uh, his skin is very pale as if he has not seen the touch of the sun in years. And his uh, hair is loose and wiry, comes down to his shoulders, and is a pale silver color. He just looks at the woman and says, Hello, Cousin Esvel. Well, as I live and breathe. Cousin Relian, I haven't seen you in, what, six years? About closer to five, but that sounds about right. I. Well, it seems we have uh, taken varying paths away from the family, have we not? Well, fate does twine us back together again. Well, you not so much. I noticed the gods. I'm surprised my parents lent those out to you. Or did you have to pay for them? Oh, I guarantee I had to pay for them myself. I'm no better in favor, really, than you are, dear cousin. However, my fortunes have been excellent. I'll have you know my, my, my fortunes are perfectly fine. I've been getting on with my studies and my dedication to the goddess of magic. I've grown in the mystical arts, and that's all that should matter to our family. I suppose so, but they were always far more into their heritage than into practical matters. I myself, as you know, I found practical methods of gaining wealth far better than inheriting them because they keep you from having certain connections that you have to observe when you don't wish to. That's why I prefer not to let the last name slip if I can help it. It makes it so certain connections don't 
have to be observed, but I feel like we're getting a little off track with our family bonding. These are my dear, dear friends, and we've come to you for a spot of help. Yes, yeah, so it would seem, but uh, I must inform you that a great many people would like to know about the Three Keys. I am afraid that even I do not fully understand them, and there is only one way that I can, and I don't see it here. Let's... Oh, uh... I grab the orb from my sleeve and I hold it out. This is the fake one? It's mm -hmm. the real one, but it's been drained. Okay. Well, no, Ep uh, Epi has the real one. Oh yeah, no, I have the fake one. That's right. Sorry. She looks at it very intently and she looks at you and she moves over. May I touch it? That avenue has already been taken by another. Rest assured that that person is in this room, and we believe that with your knowledge, granted by the knowledge we have recently attained, we can put two and two together and possibly come up with a few million, if you take my meaning. Epi would now uh, have in his mind not an old man at a desk, he has a little kid who is blowing bubbles out of a bubble tube and he is jumping up and down and occasionally stopping his bubble blowing to clap his hands and go, yes, 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 can I touch her, can I touch her? Um, to um, everybody's probable surprise, Epiphany does that exact motion. Um, like in that in that voice, in that like, can I touch you? Can I touch you? She turns. Cashton is just going to you. turn slowly towards him in like a disbelief. That is unexpected. Yes. yes, it was. She looks at you, and then she narrows her eyes, and she looks at you, and she steps forward with her hand out. Pardon me. Would you mind terribly if I touched you, sir? Reach out and touch me. No. <laughs> uh, Epiphany reaches out with the claw hand. She very gently takes your claw hand in hers and closes her eye. And the two fuse and become a new monstrosity. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> she listens. And she would hear the stone talking to her. Is there anything you want to put into the conversation? Hi, we are Epiphany. We brought the stone. We are a friend. <laughs> Do we call you cousin as well? What should we address you as? Mentally, she appears in the cacophony of voices in your head and you are able to see her standing there and she is looking at the small child that is jumping up and down your uh, elf. the stone the elf gestures yes and then there's an orc and a wolf playing poker in the back <laughs> the old painting with the dogs playing poker and uh, I feel like Epi's mind is a bastardization of all the classical meme paintings, as well as like the freaking <laughs> staircase labyrinth that leads to nowhere MC Escher painting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty much. And uh, she just. So is blitz. there a grumpy tabaxi in there? Probably. <laughs> An orange tabby tabaxi named Garfield. I hate Mondays. <laughs> God. <laughs> She blinks several times and smiles. Well, you've been gone a while. It's about time you showed up. And with that, she very gently removes her hand from yours and opens her eyes. She looks around at you. Very well. 
I believe with that I will be able to divine where we need to be. However, would you like to see what you have ahead of you? That's a would, yes. A great mess, yes, of course, please. She leads you over to a section of floor that has a kind of an odd railing sitting in the middle of it. Um, and she picks up a chair that is sitting in the, the squared off U shape of this railing and moves it over to a different place on the floor. She reaches up and grasps the railing and very slowly a trap door swings down and a ladder extends down into a cellar. And she, without any further hesitation, swings herself over on the railing and begins to climb down the ladder into the cellar. Before they go down, Varys will lean into Relian and Nakri and say, Are we sure we trust her? This could very well be a trap. If you can't trust family, who can you? Epiphany just, Epiphany just follows. I will... Thank you, young Varys, not to cast aspersions upon my family. Many things they are, but betrayers they are not. But I have been gone for a long time, so who knows? He then flips his hood back up, the dark uh, uh, just concealing around his face once more. And as he does, he just he shakes extremely violently. He's like, space, 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 not mine, not mine, not mine. He's got issues, man. <laughs> she is waiting at the bottom of the ladder when anyone who's following her down goes down with her. Yep. Yeah, Shane, he's following her. Relian and Epi, I imagine, just go together. I'm assuming we all go down. Yeah, Epiphany just followed. Um, the... Ashes, ashes. Um... She steps out onto a, uh, a stone floor that has seen better days. It is obviously not intended to be a known part of this portion of things. And there is a rutted floor here with numerous small wooden carts of the kind that miners would pull behind them uh, a man would pull behind them. The carts are perhaps two feet long and a foot wide, and there's probably about seven of them here in this underground area. Are we going prospecting? And she just looks around at everything, and then she glances at a section in the wall that you can see laying around in front of it is a bag of thieves' tools, and a lantern glowing softly in the dark. She pushes her home hood back, and you are able to see that she is half elven. And she looks at this, and she motions to a dark area in the wall where apparently a door existed. And she says, This took me the better part of a week to crack without dying. I assure you that what waits belong beyond will be even worse, and we don't even have the items that are needed. Please, follow me. And she will walk past the lantern into a very dimly lit, just the light from the lantern and a few things, so Nakri may have to deal with light or something because most of the people in the party are have the ability to see. Um, oh, uh, everything uh, but her. I thought we penciled in the well, small change that we're doing the dark. We're well, actually just going to do the dark. Vision. Between the, she'll she'll learn that between, not on this one. Okay. All right. No problem. Uh, in that case, I'll grab uh, the lantern and cast light on the inside of whatever. Like, if it's like a, is it a candle lantern? Uh, what I, kind of lantern is it? It is an oil lantern. 
an oil lantern. So whatever device is in the center, I'll cast light on that so that uh, light will be present and I'll hand it the uh, knock rate. Thank you. I could have just, uh, well, we could have just done it on the shield and made it a little easier, but that's fine. Or for that matter, dear, you could have simply picked up the lantern and brought it with you. Better a smaller source than a larger source for right now. Fair enough. I suppose that is true. However, follow me, and the passageway is reasonably large. Uh, you can notice that the, uh, the locks have been heavily tampered with. She's obviously been working on this thing for some time in the area, and she leads you down this wide, about 10-foot um, passageway, well-formed passageway, down. It, it curves slightly and goes downward, downward, until you come to a sealed door. And curved around this sealed door is dwarven writing, dwarven runes. Uh, Cashin knows uh, dwarven runes. What would they say? Present the three and be welcome. All right, and Cashin would say, Cashin would say that out loud. <laughs> Present the three, and you will be welcomed. Yes. That bill this doesn't answer dead. what the three are or where they're at. The three must refer to the keys. Of course. But no, what are the keys? They don't have to be... Keys don't always have to be keys. Do we see any kind of indentations or anything that would, like... You put a stone here, you put a book here, or something like that, there's uh, no, that shows like what rough no, shapes they could be? It, there's okay. no kind of niche or anything indicating that you lay something on it or put it into a uh, shape or anything like that. It just says, present the keys and be welcome. Um, and she just kind of motions at it, yes. Well, that is the problem, isn't it? And until you arrived, I didn't think I was going to be able to figure out where they were. Uh, you were most timely in your arrival. We sort of have that annoying habit. Yes, it's only gotten us killed. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Golor. Um, what should I call you exactly? We are Epiphany. Well, Mr. Epiphany and Golor, if you will pardon me, I must speak with Golor one more time because I must combine my knowledge with his. I have part of what is needed and he has the other. And it has taken me Ten years to get possession of this tower. Like the the hand is just like the moment, moment she says I need to talk to Golor again. It's just the hands out like Epiphany's kind of done with the whole hesitating part. <laughs> she grasps your hand as firmly and quickly as you do. She's tired of this whole thing, and she grasps it and all pretense of nicety goes away as she just simply gets down to business and she says now Mr. Galor I have the following images which I was given I was given the image of a rare and unique fungus that originates only in the underdark but apparently is here somewhere and I was given the image of a holy symbol that is not holy, but the most unholy of holy symbols. I was also told that we must have the weapon that will destroy evil, and that is the third. Where do these lie? And Golor returns to the image of the old man and closes his eyes and you begin to see images coming up in your mind. The You see this picture of this strange twisted purple and blue fungus 
and you see the image of a ship. You then, and by the way, uh, we'll discuss that what the image looks like it more in detail in a bit. Uh, you see the unholy symbol. It shows clearly in your mind, and it can be no other than the symbol of Asmodeus. Tiffany murmurs. I don't think we're ever going to hit level five. <laughs> <laughs> Not with that attitude. And finally, you see a heroic weapon that glows, the most sacred of holy weapons, and it lies on the chest of a noble and heroic man under a great manor in Waterdeep. She nods and pulls her hand away from yours. Well, it's not like they put them someplace easy, was it? No. So, what are these things that we need? <laughs> there is a ship. <laughs> and the ship you have seen, not in passing, but you have seen it. It still is sitting in the harbor. Oh. Yeah, I figured. I have a gesture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a gesture I and I can't do it. There is a vessel with symbol of did the ship the ship had the symbol of Asmodeus on it? No, the ship has the fungus that uh, is from the Underdark. Okay. There is a vessel that has a twisted fungus. And then there is a manor that and the manor is so large and so ostentatious, it can be no other than the castle enter. The manor. castle enters. <laughs> and deep within the castle enters is a mausoleum that possesses a holy blade. And the th so so I, so would would Fifty be correct in assuming? Stone is one, fungus is two, sword is three. No, the stone is only the gatekeeper. The three okay. keys are a sword, a holy yeah. symbol, and a got fungus. It, got it. Okay, so this, I, I, I mixed up the sword and the holy symbol. Uh, yep. And when if you it, saw the it, image it, of the tombs with this holy man laying there with the sword on his chest, yeah. you saw a dark nothingness beyond him as if he was almost guarding a darkness that led somehow or other to something connected to that whole, that unholy symbol. The holy man we and the unholy to. symbol is somehow or other connected. We have much to do. We are the moment. Well, this much this one much better than I was expecting. Yes, I'm very glad to know where they are. It, you know, that's not going to be terribly easy to get now, is it? Really, don't you think you could have put it somewhere that was at least partially attainable? And you hear Golor go, the two that remained. One has one, and the other has two, and they've been trying to get them all. Why didn't I see it before? You are going to have to bring the three back together again, and one will be left. Epiphany did say Castle Enter out loud, right? Yes. Yeah, at the moment I heard about uh, heard Castle Enter, I start pacing. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so basically, Epiphany relays: there's a fungus on a ship, there's a holy symbol, in a mausoleum with a righteous man. And then that's surrounded by darkness. And then there's the, the weapon. 
weapon. The, the sword. Against lanterns. Yep. So a, a sword, a holy, an unholy symbol, and a fungus are what you are looking for. That's where we will call it tonight. And you now get to go off in search of these three items and see just how good. Remember you said, you know, I created all this charisma and all these persuasion roles, and we really haven't used it all that much. Welcome to the last chapter. You are now level five. We were prophetic. <laughs> Pathetic or prophetic? Yes. Pathetically <laughs> prophetic, yes. All right, so we will, we will leave it there, gang. So uh, enjoy your last chapter of the uh, Dragon Vault and getting those keys. It's going to be a fun chapter. Next time on Water Deep Sea. <laughs> <laughs> All the, all the screaming is like level. Oh goodness gracious! All right, it's going to be all of the screaming, just not in the same sense. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. All right, Relian. After all of this, what's your final words to us tonight? Bye, everybody. Remember, they say you learn from each of your mistakes. That's why I'm making as many as possible. Soon, I'll be a freaking genius. <sighs> Thank you.